And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Jurassic Park Danger Adventure Strategy Game. Ba -na 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 -na. This game here is based on Jurassic Park. Now, the, the first movie, you know, I know Jurassic World, the second one's coming out very soon, but this is based on the original movie where they went in, saw the wonders of the dinosaurs, and then because some idiots decided to put T-Rexes and Raptors in, everything went haywire. And that's what this movie's about, or this game is about, not a movie, although this game is attempting to be the movie, where it's going to be dinosaurs versus humans. Who is going to win? Let's find out. You're going to set up the game board. Here's the Jurassic Park Island. It has a puzzle piece board. And then you're going to put the tiles in here. The perimeter ones are going to go around on the outside while inside it says center. And then, of course, there's a start tile here in the middle, which is where the characters are going to start. One person is going to control the three dinosaurs on the board. You can see the wooden pieces here. And then the other players are going to pick from the different characters. John Hammond, Dr. Sattler, the lawyer, Dr. Grant. Um, <laughs> uh, all these different characters that are in this game. Lex Murthy, Dennis Nedry. So you can be any of these characters. Each character is going to come with their own deck of cards. So if I take Dr. Hammond, then I will take all these cards. And these are the cards that I will have that I'll be able to play over the course of this game. The dinosaur player is going to have a dinosaur deck of cards, and they'll be shuffling these and putting them down here next to their board. These dinosaur cards are going to show various things, running and climbing or sneaking on them, and so play is going to start. But before we start, we should talk about how you win. So the dinosaurs win by making uh, the humans lose, but the humans win by having a certain number of characters escaping, depending on the number of players. So here you see we have it set up for four-player game. Two of these, I mean, three of these characters have to escape. So four to five players, three have to escape in a two, uh, three-player game. Two of the characters have to escape. To escape, the characters must get to these centers and turn on the control center, the visitor center and the maintenance shed, and then get to the helipad after those three things happen. They also have to have their goal. Each person has a little token representing their goal, and each person has a specific goal. So John Hammond's goal, he starts with his, for example, but if anyone else is eliminated, then he loses that goal token. She has to go to the tri tricer Triceratops, uh, that dinosaur there, to get her goal token. This guy starts with the gold token, but if he's attacked ever, he loses it. So each person, they might have their gold tokens at the beginning, and they might get them over the course of the game. It's possible over the course of the game that your character will die, in which case you get another character, and the dinosaurs will win if they eliminate enough characters. Uh, but you're never truly eliminated from the game unless, of course, everyone dies and loses. Now, players are going to be playing cards in their turn. So the dinosaurs are going to go first, and they're going to be playing a card from their hand. And so, for example, they play this one. That means I can run with one of the design dinosaurs and sneak with another one. Run is basically just go to an adjacent space, although you can't go through these mountain areas on here. You also can't go through electric fences if they're on, and players will have the opportunity when they get to the maintenance shed to turn on all the electric fences on the board. Of course, they can't go through them either. And as a side note, you probably shouldn't be holding them when they're on. Uh, so dinosaurs can move from one spot to another spot. Sneaking means you put the dinosaur down, and then on the next turn, it's going to pop up in an adjacent space. And climbing means they can climb over these mountainous areas here. The humans are going to do the same thing. They're going to all be playing cards from their hand. So maybe they're going to run, or maybe they're going to sneak. But when they sneak, they're going to have to roll a die to see if that sneak succeeds. Or they might have a special action here, like this is hold on to your butts. And you can discard this card when you're at the control center, visitor center, or maintenance shed. And you can turn on or off all the electrical things. And this is also a free action to play. Um, here Ellie has distract, where you can have the dinosaurs come after you and force them to chase after you. Dinosaurs are going to be attacking humans, and when a dinosaur attacks humans, they're going to be getting rid of a card from their hand permanently. 
See, characters will be sticking cards down in their discard spot as the game goes by, but they need, they're going to need to replenish their hand. They can do that by burning a card permanently, getting rid of a card. That's, there's a burn spot for these cards that are also put here when dinosaurs attack you. So when you run out of cards, you're dead, essentially. So you're going to need to keep the cards in your hand. You'll discard them to play them, burn one card, pull them back, and do so again and just until you escape or the dinosaurs win. And that's pretty much the game. It's not much more complex than that. Players are simply trying to use their cards. Each player has a different deck. I mean, most of the characters have run cards and climb cards. Again, they have to roll a die to succeed on a climb. Um, sneak, but they also have different you know, special ones here. Nedry has the magic word. He can activate or deactivate one electric fence on the board so he can escape on his own. Um, it is a little odd thematically that he's escaping with them, but whatever. Uh, that's how you play. All right, so the components for this game, they have the artwork, you know, it's from the movie itself, but at least they have all the characters, so that's good. Um, and the symbology and everything is really easy to see. The card quality is, it's okay, it's not great. The board itself, though, is really nice. You can see once it's together, you know, you're not worried about the tiles coming up and you have these really neat, you know, these really look good when you put them on there to show that the electric fences are on. You have some spots where you can say dinosaurs can't go. There's actually a helicopter token that flies in. And then you have a spot here where you can show to keep people safe. And everything fits nicely in it. These are really thin, but at the same time, they're just going to be sitting on the table. So overall, pretty good components. Now, on one hand, I'm very, very pleased that this game exists. So I want to be clear on that at the beginning of my review, that I am glad Jurassic Park Danger is, is a game that is out there. It is a game that's going to be in the mass market stores, I hope. Ravensburger has it out there. Uh, people are going to be attracted to it. They're going to like playing it. It's going to have um, really strong, I mean, the characters feel different. The dinosaurs are running around. The, the, the island looks like the Jurassic Park island. It just has theme oozing out of the box. And it's not that difficult to play. We have the dinosaurs running around. You have to go and do different things. And it's fairly, I mean, there is the thing about the cards, having a discard pile and a burn pile. That's going to be something most people haven't dealt with before. But for the most part, the concepts in the game are fairly simplistic. And yet, for me, and this is my rating and my thing of the game, I think it's great that a lot of people are going to enjoy this, but for me, the game was slightly lacking. Now, I didn't dislike it. I think the game is fine. Uh, I'll play it if someone asked me to, but the dinosaur player doesn't really have a lot of options. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention here, but I want to talk about is that the dinosaur has three extra actions that they can take, and so you can on your turn, you can play the card and do it. Then you can move the, the Velociraptor two space in a straight line. Or the T-Rex can attack one person twice. Or the Dilophosaurus can attack someone in an adjacent space. They have a ranged attack. Well, that's interesting, but you literally, as a dinosaur player, are just trying to attack the other players. And honestly, the dinosaur player feels like the computer player, in a sense. It never feels like you are fully fleshed out. You are just kind of... If there was no one playing the dinosaur player, every other player, and you, you could play this almost as a co-op game and just say, this is what the dinosaur player would do, because it really is what they would do. There's not a whole lot of options there. For the humans, there's not much either. They're just running and screaming and yelling and dodging. And because there's die rolls in the game, uh, the die rolls are when you are climbing over mountains, when you're activating computers, uh, and, and, you know, or, or sneaking, where you disappear, turn, come up in the next one. That's kind of lucky, and in fact, I read online that once players are at equal level of skills, the dinosaurs should win more often than not. But because the humans are running and screaming, and now you say, well, it's very thematic. I agree it's thematic, but the game never feels like it's offering you a lot of choices. You have to go to these three spots, turn them on, and then you have to get your goal and escape, which can be fairly straightforward. Do this, do this, escape. And again, I'm not critiquing that this game is not going to do well. I hope it does do well. I hope a lot of people enjoy this. But for me, even in a simplistic game like this, I'm personally looking for more options, more things to do. And I played both. I played the dinosaur. I played the humans. And for the dinosaur, I just kind of felt like I was just doing a written script. For the human player, it was a little more interesting. And you work together as a team. 
but at the same time, the goals, we need to go do this, we need to go do this, we need to go do this, should we turn on the electric fences or not? That, that's an interesting choice, and I like that because turning them on will stop the dinosaurs, but will also stop you. Uh, eh. So it's good, it's thematic. And you say, Vassal, what is your problem? You're bringing your gamerness into this. You're right, I am a little bit. Whereas a gamer, I want a little bit more out of a game. So I think that would be my final end result. This is a lot of people enjoy this. And I can't really say a lot of bad about the game, except I feel like it's a little bit more scripted than it needed to be. Sure, that follows the movie, but I wouldn't have minded some more opportunities to you know, flex my strategic tactical muscles to some degree. But hey, a lot of people are gonna just be glad that there's finally a good Jurassic Park board game. Dice Tower Judgment, Jurassic fans are gonna love this.